So I've been playing this game for a little over a month now, so I think it's time for a tier list. I'm doing this tier list before we actually get access to the CBT, just so we have a good idea of how good the characters are right now, in contrast to how good they will be in the CBT if they ever decide to make some changes. My tier list is going to be based on my experience in the PTR, and how I perceive each character based on my own teams, and as well as other players' teams in PvP, and other types of content. On a side note, I know that some of you are going to skip ahead to the end of this video because you can't wait to see the full tier list, but I highly recommend watching the whole thing so that you actually know my reasons behind the character placements. With that being said, let me not waste any more of your time and let's begin. So the first character we have is Viperion, and Viperion is 100% going to be into the double S tier. He is an absolute monster of a DPS, to the point where I would say that he is probably the best multi-target DPS in the game. What makes him so good is that he can actually hit all of your enemies using his ultimate, and the damage that comes from his ultimate alone is actually absurd. Ever since I started using Viperion, he has always been the top damage dealer in my team, so it's honestly pretty impressive. Next up we have Eddie, and this is another character that is going to be in the double S tier. If Viperion is the king of multi-target DPS, then Eddie is the king when it comes to single target damage. He basically revolves around dealing damage over time, and the main reason why he deals so much damage is because of his second ability. It's going to increase the base damage of the poison from his ultimate by 25%, and this can actually stack up to 20 times. So in combination with his other abilities, Eddie is simply going to deal a ton of concentrated damage to a single target. He is going to be really useful basically for every single boss fight, so Eddie is definitely a must have and a character that you should be using in your team. So moving on, the next character that we have is Lucius. He is probably going to be the first main tank for beginner players because for one, he is very easy to get and you also don't have a lot of accessible options. But for how easy you can get Lucius, it's honestly kind of impressive how this character holds up, even way later into the game. He is more than usable because he can get his ultimate really fast and the amount of protection that he gets is honestly pretty good. With that being said, Lucius can easily be replaced by other tanks in the game and you also have other better options for pushing content that is way beyond your combat power. So for that reason, I'm putting Lucius in B tier. So next up we have Muriel. She is a pretty good DPS, but the problem is that she doesn't really have the best range, so sometimes Muriel finds herself in a situation where she is getting hit a lot of times and maybe even getting taken out completely. It also takes her a while to generate energy for her ultimate, so other characters that have a similar ultimate are generally going to be better. So when it comes to Muriel, I'm putting her on A tier. Next up we have Laika. She is very similar to Muriel, but she has far better range and faster energy generation. Laika and Muriel's ultimates might look the same, but when you take a closer look, Laika's ultimate is actually better for some cases. Laika's ultimate only deals 200% damage compared to Muriel's 600%, but the big difference is that Laika's ultimate is going to increase her ally's normal attack damage by 50%. And after you get this to level 3, it's also going to decrease your enemy's physical defense by 25% for 6 seconds. So on paper, Lyga's ultimate is not going to deal a lot of damage, but the main purpose for this is to increase your team's overall physical damage output after Lyga uses her ultimate. That is just a really good form of utility, so because of that, I'm putting her on the S tier. Next up, we have Sylvina. She is a character that has some uses, but she's honestly not going to work, especially if you're trying to push content that is way beyond your power level. She is basically going to teleport behind the enemy lines and attack the DPS characters at the back or the healer. But if your enemies have a big power level advantage, then Sylvina is simply not going to work well. You can still use her for some cases, specifically for PvP, but generally speaking, you would actually want to use characters that can clear content beyond your power level. So for that reason, I'm putting her on a C tier. Next up we have Kafra, and he is a character that I used to have in my team, but because of the characters that I ended up sticking with, he pretty much got left to the sidelines. The problem with Kafra is that he is a character that likes to move around a bit too much, and so it can be hard to heal him, not unless you're using a healer that can heal globally. Depending on your team composition, you can definitely make him work because he can drag your enemies across the field and bring them close to your side of the stage. So if you have some sort of setup that works really well with that, then you should be fine. But in my opinion, he is immediately outshined by the other characters, so I'm putting Kafra on B tier. 
Next up, we have Valen. He is one of the very first characters that you can get, and he is also unfortunately one of the first characters that fall off once you actually progress further into the game, so I'm putting him on D tier. As for Damien, he is a healer that has the unique ability of being off field. He can also deal some damage, but the amount of healing that he does is not even comparable to the best healers that we have. Damien is still usable, but for now, I'm putting Damien on B tier. Next up, we have Carolina, and Carolina is a very disruptive mage that can freeze your enemies for a pretty long time. With that being said, her energy generation is on the slower side, so you can't really freeze your enemies that often. I also feel like her freezing mechanic is not really needed, because you have other characters that also provide the same level of crowd control, while also providing you with more utility. Carolina is not bad, but she's also not that good, so I'm gonna be putting her on B tier. Next up, we have Zatrana. I've only recently discovered that she's actually a pretty good DPS for boss fights. I tried using her for one of the bosses in the Dream Realm, and she actually did a pretty sizable amount of damage. She is more of a single target damage dealer, but unfortunately, she is nowhere near as good as Eddie. But even so, I think that she is actually good enough to be on the A tier. So Parisa is a support that has some level of damage capability, but I do think that she is leaning more towards damage. Her attack speed buff looks good on paper, but unfortunately, it is only going to affect one of your allies. And honestly, after using her for a bit, her damage is pretty underwhelming, and I haven't really seen any team compositions that need her kit. So for that reason, I'm putting her on B tier. Next up we have Cecia, and basically what she does is turn your 5v5 battles into a 6v5. Her ultimate is going to summon a minion that deals a ton of damage, and basically acts like another character on your team. For some cases, her minion actually feels a lot stronger compared to the other characters that we have, so because of that, I'm gonna be putting her on the S tier. Next up we have Atalanta. She is one of the first DPS characters that I got, but when I started to go up against enemies with a significantly higher combat power, she actually started to perform significantly worse. She is a good DPS, but she's not really someone that can carry your team if you have a deficit of 30,000 combat power or more. So for that reason, I'm putting her on A tier. Hewen is in my opinion, the second best healer and maybe even the best healer in some cases. And so I'm gonna be putting her on the S tier. I believe that she is actually the only healer with a global heal. She can pretty much heal your whole team at the same time, wherever they are on the field. That is going to be very useful for any team composition, but especially for teams where the characters are all over the place. Next up, we have the best healer in the game, and that is going to be Smokey and Mirky, sitting on double S tier. He can actually provide a ton of healing right off the bat, and he can further increase the range and amount of healing that he does whenever he pops his ultimate. The only downside is that his healing is limited to an area of effect, but for the scenarios where Smokey and Mirky are actually able to stay close to their allies, then they are going to be the best healer in the game. You can actually get Aeron for free just by logging in, and he's actually pretty impressive for a free character in the PTR. Aeron has the best grouping ability in the game, where he summons a tornado that is going to group up all of your enemies towards the center. This can help you set up your other ultimates so that you can actually hit more enemies at the same time, although it's a little bit tricky to come up with team compositions around him, but if you're able to do so, then he is going to provide a ton of value. So for Aeron, I'm putting him on the S tier. Igor is actually one of the best characters in the game. He is classified as a warrior, but he can stall the enemies for a very long time, so Igor is pretty much a tank at this point. He has really good damage mitigation, he can deal a decent amount of damage, he is also very mobile, so overall, Igor is really good, so I'm putting him on double S tier. Brutus is also going to be in the double S tier, for the same reason as Igor. He is also classified as a warrior, but he basically has this immortality mechanic that activates whenever his HP and drops below a certain percent. The immortality effect is actually going to last for a while, and for most cases, it's actually going to be enough for your team to generate enough energy and pop their ultimates. After I got this character, I was able to clear more stages because having damage immunity is going to be significantly better than a tank especially against enemies with a higher combat power. Another hero sitting on the double S tier is going to be Scarlita. She is a really good character for any team, simply because of how much utility she actually provides. At the beginning of the fight, she is going to be up in the air, and she is going to provide shields to your ally with the lowest HP. And after 15 seconds, she is going to dive down and stun your enemies for a long time. 
Corin is a very situational character and it is somewhat similar to another character that we have yet to see. But if you need someone who can provide shields and also do a decent amount of damage, then Corin is going to be the character for you. Early into the game, he was pretty good, but when I started going up against more difficult opponents, then I also started to deviate away from him because he's really not that good, especially later into the game, because the other characters that I got are simply way better than him. He is still usable because he can immediately give that shield to your characters. But the thing about that shield is that sometimes it feels random. So there is some level of inconsistency that I don't like. So because of that, I'm going to place Corin on B tier. Marily and Faye are two characters that I got early into the game. But after trying them out, after I got to the end game, I honestly think that they're not that good. Marily can use her ultimate very often, but she doesn't really do much with it. And Faye can heal your teammates by a decent amount, but her AoE is actually very very small. So for these two characters, I'm putting them on C tier. And then finally, we have the newest character, Antandra. She is a very solid secondary tank that is going to increase the survivability for your main tank. If you want to learn more about this character, definitely check out my other video where I talk about her kit and other cool things about AFK Journey. But as for my rating for Antandra, I'm gonna be putting her on A tier. So yeah, that is pretty much everything I have for my AFK Journey tier list. You might have noticed that I did not include some characters, but that is because I haven't really tested them out properly or I haven't even gotten them. So I don't think I have enough experience to actually rate these characters as of now. But hopefully you still find this video useful. And if you did, definitely make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.